you so much for joining us for this Wednesday night, May the 27th service of First Baptist Church in Loosedale. Our goal has been to encourage people during this crisis. I certainly hope that we've been an encouragement to you. If you are a part of our church, a member of our church, or even of another church, I want to thank you for taking the time to listen. Tonight, I'm going to be sharing some verses from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 6 through 11. In these verses, Paul speaks of a treasure that God has placed within our lives, at least within the lives of those of us who know and follow the Lord Jesus. Before we talk about this treasure, I want you to first consider where God has chosen to place it, the place Paul describes that God has placed a treasure, and it's in verse 7 of that chapter. Paul said, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. In ancient times, jars of clay often held a treasure far more valuable than themselves. It's still true today that a treasure is still more valuable than the container that holds it. Do you have any coins in an old fruit jar or perhaps in a little piece of pottery that's shaped like a pig that you call a piggy bank? Uh, but Paul says we have a treasure in earthen vessels, in a clay jar. The first question that must be asked about what Paul is saying is this, what is the treasure? Is the treasure our salvation or is the treasure something else? We need to look back one verse to verse six to discover the answer. And here is verse six. Paul said, for God who said, light shall shine out of darkness is the one who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the glory of the knowledge of God in the face of Jesus Christ. If you notice, Paul speaks of this treasure as something that we have been given. It's something our lives contain. So what is it? Well, it's the light of the knowledge of the glory of God that has been revealed to us in the person of Jesus Christ. That is the treasure that these clay jar lives of ours carry. Is that not a glorious treasure to be contained in something so fragile like us, so unworthy? But there is a purpose in God's choice of these containers. The containers in which God has placed the treasure are not meant to conceal it. They are meant to display it. How is it then that these clay jar lives of ours are meant to display the light of the knowledge of the glory of God revealed in the face of or in the person of the Lord Jesus? What does God know that we don't? How will people come to see what he has placed inside of us? How will his glory be revealed? Well, the discussion that follows in the verses, and we're going to read the whole section of verses in just a minute, is an explanation of what happens when clay jars crack. It is the Christian perspective of difficulty. The fact is that time and use cause these fragile containers, the fragile containers of our lives, to reveal the secret that they contain. So let me read the verses, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. Paul said, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, so that the surpassing greatness of the power will be of God and not from ourselves. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not despairing, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always caring about in the body the dying of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our body. For we who live are constantly being delivered over to death for Jesus' sake so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. Paul uses the following words to describe his own life experience. He says, afflicted in every way, perplexed, 
persecuted, struck down, always caring about in the body the dying of Jesus and constantly being delivered over to death for Jesus' sake. Opposite each one of these is that rather unusual result. The result is to reveal that the surpassing greatness of the power belongs to God and comes from God and not from us. So tonight, what I want to do is take a moment to consider Paul's perspective, allowing it to shed light on your own personal experience in the Christian life and my personal experience in the Christian life. Why is it that God allows these clay jar lives of ours that contain the light of the glory of Christ to be so roughly treated? What is it that Paul is saying to us about his own spirit, own experience, that can help us as we face our own personal affliction or difficulty? Well, Paul's language concerning the exceeding greatness of divine power as compared with human weakness suggests a, a confrontation, as it were, between two opposite forces. This is what Philip Edgecombe Hughes says from the New International Commentary. His words are much better than mine, much deeper, so let me read them to you. He said, two opposite forces, the one positive, the other negative, the one abundant, the other deficient. Weakness is a challenge to power. Yet the extent of God's power is such that it overcomes and transcends all of man's weakness. The former is not merely sufficient to counterbalance the latter, but it goes beyond and far exceeds it. For the Christian, the breaking up of the outward man, the daily dying to self, allows the divine life and glory within to burst forth and drive back the powers of darkness to the praise of Almighty God. It is precisely the Christian's frailty that lays him open to the experience of the all-sufficient power of God's grace so that he is able even to rejoice because of his weakness, something that astonishes and baffles the world. Those were uh, Hugh's words, not my own. Now, here's the outline for tonight. First, consider the mystery of affliction. Paul talks about affliction in these verses, his own affliction, but as he talks about his own, he's also talking with you and me about the afflictions that we experience. If you'll notice in life, affliction is not once and done. It's not an experience that comes never to return. In fact, affliction in life is over and over. It comes at us from every direction. It's an ongoing struggle. And each affliction that we endure wears a little bit on the integrity of the container. Now, the container I'm talking about is the container of your life and the container of my life. Uh, it chips us here and there. We come through each affliction a little bit more weathered and a little bit more stressed uh, than we were before. But for Paul, the great miracle is that we come through it at all. It seems that for all affliction and trouble has to throw at us, somehow we're given strength to bear it. What threatened to crush us didn't crush us after all. In the heat of the trial, we wonder how we will ever survive. And then when the storm is passed, we realize that we did so only by the grace of God. The excellency of the power was of God and not of us. So that's the mystery of affliction. Second, consider the puzzle of perplexity. What do you do? Which way do you turn? There's a frantic search for answers and direction for the journey. How, how will we ever get to where we're going and where are we headed anyway? Who would ever dream that Paul, the great apostle Paul, was ever perplexed or puzzled? How did he find his way? How did he find his way through the maze of life's uncertainty without throwing up his hands in despair? In fact, Paul's perplexity put him in a position to be of greater dependence upon God for direction. His life displayed the glory of God's guidance. How was Paul smart enough to know uh, what to do and where to turn? 
Well, he just simply wasn't. Neither am I. Neither are you. But guidance comes, doesn't it? We get to where we're going. And when we look back, looking back, we can see that the excellency of the power, the greatness of the power, belonged to God and not to us. But along the course of the way, we grow a little bit gray due to the stress of it. Our worry lines deepen. The weariness takes its toll and the container gets chipped in a few more places. The glaze begins to show a few signs of crackling. Why would God allow such to happen to the container that holds the treasure of the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the person of Jesus Christ? So we talked about the mystery of affliction and the puzzle of perplexity. Third, consider the pain of persecution. As I guess you know that when people throw rocks at jars of clay, something is bound to be broken. Once Paul was stoned and left for dead, but he didn't die. How did he not? How did he survive? What brought him through? But the container that was Paul was left damaged. Now not just weathered on the surface, but cracked and broken. Why is that? Well, Paul wants us to know it was so that the treasure in the container could be revealed. It was so that the light of the knowledge of the glory of God revealed in the person of Jesus Christ could shine through, could show through Paul's life. Just as when Stephen was stoned and Paul tells us about holding Stephen's garments as others threw stones at him, he said that the people who saw Stephen's face saw his face like the face of an angel. What was happening there? Well, the light of the knowledge of the glory of God revealed in the person of Jesus Christ was shining through the cracks in the clay that was Stephen. As you know, Paul did survive many of his difficulties and he lists a great many of them in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. He says, beginning in verse 23, I was beaten times without number, often in danger of death. Five times I received from the Jews 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I've spent in the deep. I have been on frequent journeys in dangers from rivers, dangers from robbers, dangers from my countrymen, dangers from the Gentiles, dangers in the city, dangers in the wilderness, dangers on the sea, dangers among false brethren. I have been in labor and hardship through many sleepless nights, in hunger and thirst, often without food, in cold and exposure. Apart from such external things, there is the daily pressure on me of concern for all the churches. Paul could bear witness to all of those troubles, but here he says in verse 9 of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, I have never been forsaken. The Lord stood with him on every occasion and brought him through so that the excellency of the power might be of God and not of Paul. Fourth, consider the peril of being pinned. The reason I talk about being pinned is not just to make the P's match up in the, in the sentence, but to show you one of the meanings of the word in Greek. The word struck down in these verses is an athletic term or a military term, and it means to be thrown face down. And so what Paul was saying is, I have been pinned down, but never counted out, punched, but never knocked out of the fight, knocked face down, but never failed to get back up. And how did he keep getting back up and keep on going? It was by God's grace. God's grace was made perfect in Paul's weakness. And every time there was a new crack in the clay jar that was Paul, there was another spot where the light of the glory of God revealed in the person of Jesus Christ could shine through. What of the clay jar that is you? Has the stress of life taken its toll? Does it seem that there are more chips and cracks and gaping holes in the container that is you? Is your life becoming more weakness than strength? So finally, what is the plan of providence? 
How, here's how Paul summed up his struggles. He said, always caring about in the body the dying of Jesus. Paul yielded himself up to these struggles and realized that he was called to yield up his fragile clay container so that it could be broken. Every time it was, the life of Jesus was manifested in his body. The light of the glory of God was revealed through Paul's difficulty. Do you realize that that's also true in your life and in mine? Do you remember the story of Gideon and the 300 fighting men when they delivered clay pitchers to all the men? 300 clay pitchers and 300 torches. And the torches were placed inside the clay pitcher so that the pitcher concealed the light from the torch. But at a given moment in the battle, the pitchers were to be smashed. And when they were smashed, the brightness of the torches was suddenly revealed. But in order for the light to shine, those clay jars had to be broken. Do you understand what Paul was saying? These clay jars are meant to be cracked. There is a glory inside us that will not be released unless they are. Please don't understand. I don't mean to say that cancer or diabetes or whatever calamity has come into your life is not hard. It is hard. Those things do leave people broken. I'm only asking you to see the opportunity that exists in your brokenness. God has placed a treasure inside that clay jar life of yours. Cancer is a crack in the clay. Affliction chips away at the container. Sometimes something comes along like the loss of someone we love that leaves a huge gaping hole in our lives. Yet out of the cracks in the clay, it is possible for God's glory to shine. Paul said in verse 11, for we who live are constantly being delivered over to death for Jesus' sake so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. I don't know where this devotion finds you in your journey. For the past several weeks, I've been talking with Lee Merck, one of the men who grew up in our church. Lee is a minister in Montana, and he has given himself to the Lord's work. And yet at the present time, he finds himself passing through some struggles with his health for which he's seeking, seeking answers. Lee understands that the cracks in the clay jar life that is his have a greater purpose. I would simply ask you to pray for him during this time as he resurrenders his life to God's purpose and looks for the plan of providence in your life. I also would ask that if I can pray for you, you let me know. We need each other's support so that we will be sure to allow the light of the knowledge of the glory of God revealed in the person in the face of the Lord Jesus Christ to shine through the cracks in our clay as we pass through seasons of difficulty. Thank you so much for listening. I pray that the Lord would support you in your personal journey going forward. It would be my joy to be of an encouragement to you. If I can, just simply email me. The email address is there on the screen. Blessings to you in your journey. May God's glory be revealed in and through your life. Thank you for listening.